How I fund my business. So I get asked this question quite a bit and I thought, let's let Honest Tom out of the cupboard and tell you. So if I wind it right back to the start, yeah, I bought my first property when I was 22. I've always been a bit of a saver, always wanted to get on the property ladder. So I bought my first property. After I first purchased my, my first flat, I then met Bianca. Bianca had three kids when I met her. Lily was five, Macy was three, and Lawson was one. So three very small children. After about nine or 10 months, Bianca was pregnant with our first child, Jude. And then we went on to have George and Frank after that. So we got six kids in total. In that period, I had to go and work away. Yeah, I was working away for the engineering company because the money was better. Whilst I was working away, I saved up enough money to buy my first house, sold the flat, bought a house. I kept on working and I thought, look, working away and earning okay money, there's, there's two things that's gonna happen here. You're either gonna get used to a nice lifestyle or you gotta put the money into something else. So what I did, I managed to remortgage and save up enough money to buy a second property. So I had that rented out for years up until a year ago. So I owned that property for years and years and years. In amongst all this, we've got six kids growing up, you know, so money is always scarce. You know, you need to earn plenty of money to keep the things ticking over. Throughout this whole period, I sold vehicles as well, part-time, built up a very, very small pot of money in terms of what you need for cars. Um, but the rental property I had, was old, it was tired, it needed a lot of money spending on it to bring it up to where it should have been. I spent a fortune on trying to get planning for another property in the garden, which the, the council just squashed. That hemorrhaged money. So in the end, I was getting taxed on it every month and you know, it just, it was no longer worth owning it. So what I did, I sold it. And with the money from the sale of my second property, I started the business. This business wasn't Grown, and this is not, this sounds like I'm being bitter, I'm not, but I have funded this business from the start, yeah, with my own money that I've worked very, very hard for by buying that second property and selling it. So I got lots of people that I know, and I'm sure you know lots of people who have been gifted this business, or they've been born into a family business with a, a black book of contacts and a huge bank account or a bank account at least that is set up. I have never had that, you know? I've never been given anything with a silver spoon, as we say, or, or gifted those contacts and, and places to go and, and people to open doors with. I've had to push and break down every single contact that I've got now through my own hard work, yeah? So, this isn't about get the violin out. I'm just explaining to you how, how this business has, has come to where it is. So when I've been stood there before, and I have been stood there before with people who are like, yeah, running your own business, mate, it's really difficult, isn't it? No emails at night. I'm thinking like, you're backed by a multi-million pound family business, yeah? I can't have this conversation with you because at times I actually feel sick with anxiety that I need to sell something to keep this whole machine rolling. Now, I know it'll take me years to make this business established and have enough assets and stock around me that you can weather the storm slightly easier. I know boys who've, who've grown a business from nothing yet and they've got 40, 50 cars in stock and they still have the same conversation with me. They get anxious and feel sick and don't sleep at night because of the stresses and the worries it brings. So that's all part of running your own business yet. So, I sold the house, invested all the money into the business. That was it. I put everything that, that come out of that sale. And the day I actually received the statement to say you've completed is the day I handed my notice in to the engineering company I've been with for 15 years. Because there was no point me putting it off anymore. If I'd have allowed, oh, well, I'll wait another six months and I'll do it. I would have never have done it. That money would have gone in the bank and I don't know whether it would have gone on the house or something else. I don't know. So started the business with the sale of the, of the property money. But look, that money only buys you so much stock and, and gets you places. So what I did, I understood that a lot of people want to have vehicles on finance. Whether they've got the money to buy it outright or not, some people just want to have it on finance. So then I applied for my FCA license, my Financial Conduct Authority license, yeah? That was a fortune. And I understand now, since I did it probably last year sometime, it's gone up again. But you've got to be FCA regulated. I'm VAT registered through the turnover of the business. So what that then means is Close Brothers come along. So Close Brothers have been fantastic for me and the business, yeah. They've sort of took me under their wing. They've, they've, I would say, look, 
Not they've taken a chance on me because there's not just willy-nilly. All my account history, all my personal banking statements, everything had to go to them to prove that I was a good candidate to be given what we call stock funding. So Close Brothers reached out and, and look, I cannot thank those guys enough for what they've done for my business and they still do. I speak to them all the time and I'm very, very grateful for their input into this. So the stock funding, what happens with that? So I've never had it with anyone else and I've heard horror stories about how people conduct their business other ways, but because I'm not a born and bred car salesman, I only know how to do it the way I've been told by the people who've offered me this. So if you're born and bred in the car industry, you might know how to cut corners or do different things. I don't, I just do everything by the book and I would rather do that because at least I can sleep at night, I say sometimes, knowing that everything is right. So anyway, Close Brothers have given me a facility of 75,000 pounds. Now that sounds like 75, right, let's go. Let's go and buy a load of cars. It doesn't work like that. How it works is I buy the car, yeah? So this is the basic figures I'll use. So say I buy a car for 10,000 pound trade money. Close Brothers automatically populate what they will give you back towards that car, back into your bank, so then you can buy more cars. So the whole £10,000 hasn't got stuck in the one car. So Close Brothers might populate it that they give you 70 or 80% back of the value of that car. So I've spent 10, ooh, they give me £8,000 back now. So I've still got £2,000 in the car, but I've got the £8,000 back that I can go and do other things with. But you have to have that money initially to buy the car. So you can't just go and spend the £75,000 willy-nilly on cars that you choose and, and do what you want with it because you have to have the money to front the deal initially. Then obviously you get charged interest and you've got about 90 days to sell the car, otherwise the money goes back. But if you've got a car in stock over 90 days, something's probably not right with it or you've priced it too much or you've got to do something to keep the stock moving. So that's another added pressure, you know, you're thinking all the time in the background that's costing you money, but it also gives you the freedom to have more stock. Now, for me at the moment, I've said my stock levels have gone right down as far as numbers, but my quality of stock is slightly up. But I am going to look at sort of having a few cheaper cars in here again, just to keep the wheels turning. So my own money and stock funding from Close Brothers helps me put this business together. Now, don't be fooled yet. And I, I, I see people ask me this question. Oh, I just don't know how I'd start. How did you build all those cars? All those cars, all seven of them right now. But... Every single dealer out there that's got any sort of big forecourt or lots of cat will have stock funding. And I'll, I'm telling you, a lot more than I've got, yeah? I'm only allowed that because of the size of my business. If the business grows, they might go, oh, this year you can have 100. Next year we might have 250. There's people out there with millions of pounds worth of stocking loans. So don't go on to a forecourt and think, oh God, the guy running that business must be absolutely minted. He's got millions of pounds worth of cars here. It's all cloak and dagger, the car game. I'm here, you know, telling you how it works, but that's it. You know, obviously you've got to be in a position to have a certain amount of money in each vehicle. I get that, but... Don't be intimidated by thinking that if you want to do this and you really feel passionate about doing it, you can't. You don't have to be gifted a family business. You don't have to be gifted a multi-million pound bank account behind you to keep you going. You can start it from a, a few small cars and build it up. Treat customers right. Go over and above for customers before and after the sale because that will only do you good in the future. So, look... It's probably gone on a little bit, but I feel like this video will put it out there of how this business has started and how I currently run it. I mean, I'm learning as you get older and, and into this business, good debt is okay. Bad debt, no. But in this game, you've got to learn at times to, to I don't want to say that word, but go for it. You know, you've got to put stuff on the line and think, right, I'm going to have a go at this and I'm going to borrow money and I'm going to do what I need to do to make the business work. Right now, for me, it's a very humbling experience running my own business um, because, like I said to you before, and there's no lying here, it's very, very quiet for me right now. Um, my stock levels are really low. The phone's not ringing. You know, you go from selling stuff before it even lands into stock and you're like, oh, my God, I can't hold on to anything to like, Bianca, ring my phone. I think you stopped working. There's no one ringing me. And, and, and it's been like that for the last couple of weeks for me. So... I'm very anxious right now about, about the business, not as will it carry on, but sales, you know, I want to get some sales going. I've got the competition coming. It's anxious times at the moment, but hopefully you have seen now through this video how I run the business. 
And if you want to have a go at it and you feel like you can do it, just do it. Thank you again for watching.